Hey, hey, Terry Bean. Cool episode of Business Growth Time. We're going to talk about virtual reality in all reality. Hey, I'm sitting here, as usual, good friend, lovely lady, very talented marketer, Janet E. Johnson, where the E stands for enabling, because she's going to enable some business growth for you today. <laughs> Enabling. Enabling could be many things, but yes, we're going to enable you with good habits. We're going to enable you with good <laughs> habits. We're not going to give you those bad habits. You can get those elsewhere. You don't even have to go to the internet for that. Exactly. So, Janet E. Johnson, um, Ernie doesn't know this, but I've taken a job. And so we're clear. I haven't really taken a job. Not a job, time. yeah. I've become mm -hmm. a shareholder in a new company mm -hmm. um, in the virtual reality space. And so the last, I don't know, 30 to 45 days of my life has been heads down, buried into all things virtual reality. Some things augmented reality, a couple of things mixed reality. And we're going to talk about that today. Are you excited? Because I'm kind of excited. I've been in this world. I was in this world before you a little bit because my kid had this and bought this thing. But it all started with me being mad at him for the money he spent on it. That's right. You have a PlayStation 4, and Sony is one of the biggest hardware manufacturers huh. in the VR space right now. Um, mm -hmm. And they're on the, the mid-level. They're not total high-end, but they're in the mid-level. Okay. They're better than that Samsung gear where you pop oh, your yeah. telephone. Oh, way in. better. I've tried both, yeah. Mm -hmm. And super better than Google Cardboard, which is the low end entry level piece. Got it. Okay. Right? So, you know, from a price point perspective, Google Cardboard's like 20 bucks, right? So you can just throw a phone in the cardboard. And it's okay. like, uh, remember when we were kids, we had the Viewmaster? Right, the, the oh, there was the red thing, God, and the yeah. disc, yes. and all the pictures. I want one of those like again, this. just for but, humor. <laughs> I, so the VR technology, really, the Oculus part of it that yeah. they were looking through, okay. is very similar to that experience. That was kind of like a mini VR. So you know what people are seeing through Google Cardboard and, and even Samsung VR to an extent. Uh, is that is that almost 360 degree photograph so you feel like you're set in the middle of it but the overall experience is a little bit different mm -hmm. so i watched you created a facebook video of you <laughs> in virtual reality on your son's playstation 4 um I, if I, I'll be daring enough to put it in the show notes. Yes. That's what I, was gonna ask. I don't know where the link is, but I'll find it. I'm oh, sure. we'll it's, find it. If, if you guys want to see some comedy, yeah, you can watch that, that video. Yours was, I, yeah, your, mine was much more entertaining than yours. I, you well, yours, I didn't but do what you, you did. You didn't do right? the crazy no, stuff. Nothing yeah. scared the crap out of me and what I was doing. <laughs> I felt, I felt bad for you because your husband was picking on you a little bit during that video. So his commentary is a little bit mean, but we'll, we'll show, we'll show, we can put both videos up in this. Yeah. Um, so, but, so talk to us about that experience. That was the first time you'd been in VR, mm -hmm. right? And, and so what were you doing? I'm sure you remember it pretty well. Yeah. Well, I mean, I did a couple of things and now of course I've done some more. My kids bought many, many games uh, for it, but Basically, it's, you know, you put it on and you're in the world. And the thing is, you can turn around and you can look up behind you. The coolest game we have at this point that I think is Batman. So Batman is pretty cool because you put on his armor, you know, his suit. And, and then, you, you, you know, you have his weapons. And, but things jump out at you. And it's so incredibly real and you're in it. And I've gotten nauseous a couple times. I mean, you know, my dad did it. He's 83 years old, 82. I don't remember exactly, but in the 80s. And he had to sit down because he was getting nauseous right away. And he did an eagle flying one. Ooh. Eagle flying over through Paris. You know, and he was loving it. But he, he had to do it sitting down because it, you're so engrossed in it that it can get you nauseous. He, my son tried to have me do one that you're going down look long dark tunnels well i have claustrophobic issues already so i'm in these long and you're waiting for something it's quiet and it's all spooky and stuff and you're waiting for something to jump out i couldn't handle it so it's it's very in the you're in it 
Well, and you're talking about the, the immersion portion of it, yes. right? You are fully immersed yes. to the extent that your brain does not know the difference between whether it's actually happening or if it's just some game that you're playing. And I'll give you a great example. The, one of the things I did was called Richie's Plank. And Richie's Plank is a scenario where you go up an elevator. I would not do that one. 50, 60 stories no. high. And you walk out, the elevator opens, and you look, and you're like looking at the skyscape of the city, right, and the whole scenery. And in front of you is a plank that's roughly eight feet long by maybe 12 inches wide. And you have to go out on the plank. And so for me, who's not totally afraid of heights, I was able to walk out on the plank. But as I was walking, it felt like I was on a balance beam that I didn't have enough balance on. And I said 12 inches wide. It was probably eight inches wide. And I was on the floor in the middle of my friend's living room, knew that I was on the floor. But walking on this plank, I was teetering and tottering and trying to keep my balance on this little narrow plank and got to the end and, and turned around. But I've watched people not be able to do it. Panic start sweating can't do it i don't think i could do a height thing i couldn't do a height height thing Mm -mm. you don't know the difference and it's so so cool so virtual reality has been around for decades and so one of the things that i learned is virtual reality has been around for decades it started in the late 50s right and again it's that same kind of view master technology that just changes the view and in the way our brain is wired Right. Once we hit, it hits the, the information hits the occipital lobe in the back of your brain that transfers the information. Are you in science right. class. You see. <laughs> yeah. Right. Hey, Biology. That, that was a, that was a, hey, where's the quarter? I need a that's a quarter. A big word for Terry right there. <laughs> occipital lobe. Look it up. It's good stuff. Um, uh, your brain doesn't know the difference, right? It doesn't. It your occipital lobes like your this is your real situation right so it was kind of clunky and it was kind of big and the technology was a little bit slow and and so 50s 60s didn't really grab hold yeah. the the next really interesting revolution was the 90s um nintendo came out with this thing called virtual boy and Virtual Boy is very similar to what you have, with the exception it was monochromatic, right? So just oh, all red or all black, right? It was two shades and it was squares and it looked oh, like a pixely kind of. It looked like a horrible version of Tron. Yeah, it was, uh, it was really bad. Um, so, you know, and everybody was talking about how it's going to be the next big thing back then and it didn't catch on. And they made some video games where. They were fully immersive where you'd sit and be in the driving seat and it just didn't work. It just didn't work. Huh. But what's happened now is in, in 2012, I think it was, a kid named uh, Lucky Palmer decided he was going to make the new Oculus Rift. Right, and so he started building it, and he put together a Kickstarter campaign. And the campaign uh, blew huh. past its goal. They wanted two hundred thousand. I think he raised two million. It was like ten or a hundred times what they thought. And in fast forward, they start building prototypes, and they start looking at it, and they're really getting some traction. But before they even come out with a finalized product that they could sell to a consumer, in two thousand fourteen. Mark Zuckerberg and his friends at Facebook plunked down $2 billion for a non-revenue generating company. They bought Oculus for $2 billion, right? And, and the Oculus didn't have a final product. Wow. So that was 2014. That, I did hear something about that, yeah. Now that you're saying that, I just didn't really pay close attention, but I know he did some VR stuff and that kind of thing. Okay. Yeah. And that was the VR stuff. So Got it. So Oculus is operating similar to how like an Instagram or a WhatsApp would operate, right? It's an independent operating mm, organization got it. under the Facebook umbrella. So they let them kind of do their own thing. Um, in 2016, right around March, April, so a year ago from right now, they finally shipped their first product. 
2016, so two years later. HTC, a company out of Korea, had bought their way into the technology. They bought another hardware manufacturer, and they started shipping their product in April. All the while, the technology inside of computers, the software, the processing power, caught up. Right, so now, you know, I mentioned that the the Samsung Gear VR thing is kind of a low end experience. That's an Oculus product, by the way, but it's a low end experience. Yeah, and Sony is kind of positioned right in between the the HTC. You know, you can buy the Samsung Gear thing for a hundred bucks. Yeah, I think your PlayStation, uh, and I don't know if that included the PlayStation or not. It's between four and six hundred dollars. Six hundred fifty dollars for all the accessories and everything. I, yeah. I know so, the price point. <laughs> but, that, but that included the PlayStation too, right? It's no. Just, just the, oh, well, we already have the PlayStation. That's so that's the VR stuff only. You had to have two wands or something. Yeah. And then, yep, and so then the, the head on a display. Yep. Okay. Mm-hmm. So that's a lot higher than in terms of price than I thought. Because yep. you could go buy the Oculus Rift goggles for six hundred dollars. Just the just the goggles. Oh yeah, but you don't need the the PS4. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, okay. but you're connecting. You need a high end with a like a high end gaming computer in the the laptop oh, or the desktop. It. It's gonna cost you fifteen hundred dollars. That's true. That's just true. So to, it's kind of yeah. Just to get in the game. Got it. Right? And that doesn't include any remote sensors because it's just the headset. Right. If you want the paddles or the wands that you just mentioned, that's another two hundred dollars, and it comes with those and the sensors. Whereas the HTC Vive comes with all of it: the wands, the head-mounted display, the sensors, um, for eight hundred dollars. So it's kind of, okay, right? okay. But you still need a super duper computer. You're not going to Best Buy and getting a Chromebook. It ain't working, right? So you're you're twenty five hundred dollars into it to to make it. Some people, it's worth it. Some people, it's worth it, right? Some people, not my thing, but yeah, yeah, it might be worth it. And there's gamers. I mean, there's some serious gamers out there, so I get it. Serious Mm -hmm. gamers, and more importantly, there's some serious developers. So yeah, yeah, and and you have to you have to be in the environment to develop for the environment, right? If that makes sense. So from a software development kit perspective, yep. Right. You can, they're doing all kinds of crazy stuff. So that's, I mean, the gaming thing is crazy and it's huge. And I, and I laugh about it because to me, that's the gateway drug, right? That's where people are going to get involved. They're going to get interested. They're going to have the experience in the higher quality gear, the higher the quality of gear, the less likely you are to get nauseous. Right. So, Mm. you know, because it's not, it's not, it's real time, right? So as you move, everything moves. What, mm-hmm. what gets people sick is there's that delay that happens a little bit. So, cause mm-hmm. you're, you're constantly moving and checking things out. Yeah. You can't really just sit still. Oh yeah. It's so funny when everybody puts it on there, everybody's like, you know, they're always moving their head back and forth, looking up. That's it is funny watching everybody the first time. Because <laughs> you have to, because you've never yeah, seen. You're anything just so like shocked it. at it. Yeah, exactly. It's, yeah, it's so, so, and it's so immersive. Even my son, we came downstairs one day, and he goes, "When did it get dark outside?" <laughs> you know, because he's very engrossed in the whole things. So, yeah, it's yeah. it's definitely. Now, my question for you, though, is since this is business growth time, what is the business side of this? Where do you think that's headed or what's the future of this? So there's a couple of different areas, right? Arcade, virtual reality arcades growing like crazy. There's one in Eden Prairie Mall right now Mm -hmm. so that you could go and check out. That's Um, that's in Minnesota where I live. Just In Minnesota for you non-Eden Prairie knowing people. (laughs) Eden Prairie, that's an E word. Ernie likes E words. Um, So that's one. Um, But that's, you know, like I said, the gaming side is the gateway drug. Where virtual reality is going to take hold and is going to blow up is in a couple of very specific areas tourism right so being able to travel without actually leaving your seat is going to be amazing so i'm talking to people in the in the cruise industry right and so we're talking about having vr on ships 
but we're also talking about how they can showcase other destinations for their cruise line, right? Oh, so you're on the Mediterranean Totally, cruise. yeah. Here's the experience on the Caribbean cruise. Here's the Alaska cruise. This hmm. is what the river cruise looks like. This is the South China Sea cruise, and you can be like you're right there, right? So, but mm-hmm. then more importantly, think about it from when you actually get to a destination. Hey, these are the 27 things you might want to check out in St. Thomas while you're here for the between 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. You can go to these three restaurants. You're going to want to go to these two shops. You're going to want to definitely mm-hmm. check out this little hotel because you may want to come back and hang out there. This is the one beach. This is the snorkeling area, right? So the whole port area becomes a really cool destination. Mm. So travel and tourism is phenomenal, right? That's that's one section. The next section that I Wait, see, let me guess. Go ahead. Real estate? Real estate's going to be big too. Real, I've got a buddy of mine that's been doing VR in real okay. estate for the last couple of years, like even before VR was really even – popular thing um because yeah you can go in you can see the entire house while you're sitting in the realtor's office and then you can decide hey out of these 12 places which one do you actually want to go and drive to think about how much time Mm. it saves yeah because you can skip i don't like that kitchen right oh this bathroom's wank tank i'm not doing it whatever so you can skip all of that. So you mm. threw real estate in, and I wasn't even thinking about real estate. So I still have two more. Oh boy! Okay, go for it. What's no, the other? I, I well, oh, to guess. I'm supposed to. Oh well, that was the one I wanted to guess. Oh, okay, well, that I, was a good. Guess. Um. Well, I've also. It's an area about, near and dear to your heart. That's as you say, the construction, remodeling slash pools, um, that kind of area thing. And I'm going to lump all that into real estate. Right, because it's all Got property it. or property development. Okay. So the next one is training. So I told you that it basically tricks your brain into yeah. thinking that it's absolutely real. So yeah. it doesn't matter whether you're a, a basketball player practicing free throws, right, and going through the motion and watching the ball. So like golf, you could be a golfer and do you, the. You I'm surprised they the don't split. have that already. They mm-hmm. are sure they do. I am mm-hmm. sure. Well, well not on ours. We've looked through the whole thing, and oh. there's no real golf on there. Believe me, my husband's looked. Wait, he would, he would, no, <laughs> yes, but no. So that's interesting because there's a difference between the training and development side and the yep. gaming side. Okay. Yep. Yep. Even so though, you're talking training and development. So if you're, but if you're a golfer, you could train yourself through the VR. Is you what you're train saying? Train yourself okay. through the VR. But what's interesting is the immersion, uh, uh, the the confluence of gaming and learning. Right. So the fact the word gamification has been a really big word in both internet marketing and trying to keep people's attention. Mm-hmm. It's also a big word in training and, and employee advocacy, which is a word we just used a couple of times in the last show. Yeah. Um, because you can get people dialed in to a very specific thing and have them learn while they don't feel like they're learning. So training in particular, repetitive tasks and dangerous tasks, things that you have to be able to execute properly, like moving a crane, for instance, without damaging anything, you can learn how to do that in VR because it helps create the muscle memory that you need to actually do things the right way. Hmm. So training in oil rigs is huge. Interesting. And and then tangentially connected but not the same is probably the biggest opportunity of all, medical in the medical field it's they're looking at things from a vr perspective all the way from i have heard that but i just i don't know that field enough to know what exactly so go deeper a little bit yeah sure so same thing training right yeah training people how to do surgery and yeah. do things um, the right way where you're not actually you yeah. know I, I sliced you but i sliced you in the wrong spot now we're all, we're all getting sued no yep. you can you can actually practice and do the right things and it's you can take 360 degree photos and so detailed and so uh, high resolution that it seems very real, 
right? And so you can make the response happen. Um, but medical, so much deeper than just the training side, you have the ability now to pretend you're in a capsule and fly through at a cellular level and go look at cancerous cells and be able to identify mm. and, and really kind of map out the, the gene pool inside of a human. Simultaneously, they're using VR to, uh, to relax patients, right? They're now using VR instead of drugs because, again, you're taking the mind off of the pain. You're giving the mind something else to focus on. So it's changing the way post-operative treatment mm. is being handled. Interesting. Um, yeah, it's, it's fascinating. It's this fascinating. stuff goes deep. Yeah. One of my... Now, my question is, are you always going to have to wear that giant headset every time, or are they going to get that fixed where it's a little bit smaller and more comfortable and you don't look like a stupid you, geek? You don't look like a stupid geek. Right. Well... Um, you know, technology, right? Smaller, bigger, or smaller, cool. better, faster, right? So it'll, it'll continue to shift and change. Yeah. The downside is that the, from a virtual reality perspective, it's gotta be, it's gotta be dark, right? Virtual reality oh. is almost like you're inside of a movie screen, yep. right? And you're in a theater and the whole thing is 360 degrees. The other side of virtual reality, and you, you hear these terms not necessarily interchange, but you hear them together a lot, is virtual reality and augmented reality. Augmented reality is where you're wearing almost clear glasses and information's being popped right into the glasses. Yeah. You imagine going through a grocery store and, and seeing, uh, you know, they've got RFID chips inside of the boxes, your glass hits it, and all of a sudden the nutrition information pops up on the cereal or whatever the information that you're looking mm. for. It could be deals. It could be. You could put your list in it. Your list. You could put your shopping <laughs> list, right? And you could have your shopping list tied to, hey, it, it could be located inside of the store. Hey, the macaroni and cheese is in aisle 17, man. All right, that's my shopping list. I don't know, you know the uh, fresh fruit and vegetables. I can just see everybody walking around with these glasses now shopping. Oh my god! Well, well, you remember Google Glass, right? I know, and then the Snapchat has the glasses now too. That's been this hype too, and yep, and it and it failed because people weren't getting the right value out of it. But yes. it wasn't. It wasn't ready. It was the yep. first attempt. Yeah. So what's going to happen eventually is mixed reality where your glasses will be light so you can deal with the augmented reality, right? The things that you're going to see every day and not have to worry about. And then they'll be able to shift into darkness where you can do the virtual reality. Hmm. So there's a product and I can't, I, I can't remember who makes it, but it was debuted at CES this year. And it was the first of its kind that allowed okay. both types of reality to come out. But that's going to be where this all goes. They're predicting that by 2020, virtual reality will be a $30 billion industry, three zero billion. This is basically an industry that doesn't exist. There's less than... I know. There's less than 100,000 headsets out in space, I think. might be less than a million, but I think it's less than 100,000. It's 70,000 or 700,000. Don't really? quote me yet. My um, kid had like the first one. Yeah. Go out and buy it like that. He was on it. I love that. Um, I didn't. <laughs> yeah. Hey, it was his money. He could do it. Just... You know, he's trying to be saved for a car. Yeah, well, right. it's based yeah. on what you were telling me the other day. You should have him. <laughs> <Right. laughs> uh, that's a car crash joke, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, that's um, good. So that's funny. But so that space is thirty billion. Augmented reality is scheduled to be at one hundred and fifty billion dollars by twenty twenty. So you wonder why Facebook popped two billion dollars? Yeah, exactly. Ago. The last area that we didn't talk about is social VR. Right. Okay. The idea that people are going to go and instead of hanging out on their Facebook profile and looking at photos and maybe the occasional video, now all of a sudden, similar to what Second Life was, if 
for people that remember Second Life, you'll actually have your own avatar and you'll be able to go and interact with people. So think about conferences from a business perspective. You want to go have mm -hmm. a sales meeting. You're in Minneapolis. Your client's in Boston. You both strap on the gear. You can go meet at a conference table on top of Mount Kilimanjaro if you want and just hang out there and have conversation. So we could do these time. recordings through VR? Oh, yeah, 100%. <laughs> Oh God! No, I'm, I'm a nervous for our future. Yeah, no, you're like, oh, no. Terry's gonna make me do it this. We way. already, we already thought it was, you know, we're, we've we've gone the video stuff. You know, this is a pretty cool technology as it is. I can't even imagine that. Yeah. It's for sure. So mm -hmm. there's a lot that's going on in VR, and it's an exciting. Uh, it's the wild, wild west, right? Yeah. So I'm in the process of joining the thing called the VR AR Association. Okay. And, and what what the one of the some of the conversations that the committees are having are you know the ethics, right? And what can you do? What can't you do? What uh, what's the way to handle this? And and kind of writing down bylaws for the industry as itself because it doesn't wow. even. Have it. So it's neat. And then marketing and advertising, you want to talk about captive audience when they're stuck in the goggles, right? Mm. In-game marketing and advertising or product placement. So yep. you're yep. driving, you're, you're racing your car around and all of a sudden there's a flash of the, of the tire and it's Goodyear. Yep. And yep. that, I mean, that's some cool stuff going yep. on. Yep. That so. would be, yeah. And I can totally see that in, being implemented later yeah yeah and soon probably i mean that could be could be implemented now i mean That's you know right. they could pay this video game producer to you know be in there or whatever and then it could be on there immediately yeah so With that's out of doubt. yeah that's cool so to leave our audience ernie with a Final tip on if they're interested in learning more about VR or, you know, the future of it or how it could affect their business or their future, that kind of thing. What, what would you suggest? You know what? I, here's what I would tell you. Get the to a Microsoft store. Right. So Microsoft has different stores and different malls inside of the Microsoft store is the HTC Vive and okay. they do demos of the HTC Vive. So just go throw on the goggles and spend 10 minutes and imagine the possibilities that are there. And, and I think you'll be blown away outside of that. Um, you know, I've got a page right now on Facebook called private label VR where I'm sharing information and stories and discoveries and findings. So you can kind of, and it's not just about arcade space. It's about everything because I'm trying to be immersed in this and showcasing what's new and what's hip and what's going on. So you can find that and kind of stay dialed in. Um, what was the name of it again? It's private label VR. If okay. you, if you search that out, um, okay. it'll probably change because we're talking about a branding exercise right now because uh, why wouldn't you do that uh, our twitter accounts ezvr1 uh, and you can find it either by the, it's ezvr and it's either the number one or the word one you can find it either way um, and that'll be a good place to kind of stay dialed in too um, but it's cool man go check it out and yeah if you i think that, everybody needs to experience it if you put the mm -hmm. Samsung Galaxy thing on, understand that mm -hmm. that's cool, but you basically just hopped into a 2008 Saturn as opposed to a 2017, you know, insert fancy car here. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. No, and that's a good. I had actually done the one we have before I did the Samsung. Oh, so, yeah. So you yeah, must have been like, ew. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm like, wow. oh. I'm, Why are you calling that? This isn't the same thing. That reminded me of what you were talking about, the little clicker thing kind of. <laughs> right. Right. I, had a, I had a client for years that owned a car dealership, right? And he's got like a 34, maybe it's even bigger, maybe it's a 42-foot yacht, right, with three bedrooms and two bathrooms on his boat. And, and I have a 21-foot runabout where I can go water skiing. And I'm like, how are these both called boats? It's, <laughs> the, it's the same story. That's exactly it. Yeah, that's exactly it's, it. So there's levels of, yep, there's level. And the ones that you'll find out there in the shops are going to be even a level up from 
the one we have here. So yeah, yeah and I haven't gone that far, but this was enough for me. Yep. <laughs> yeah, get the to the Microsoft Store. There you go. Or okay. A virtual reality arcade near you because in 2017, by the time this year ends, they're going to be everywhere. Good. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Awesome. Well, if you want to find us past episodes, we have many, many past episodes. We just hit our two year mark of doing these podcasts. So that's, we've been doing this a while. Yeah. We've been doing it a while. So you can find and that. It's at still this, fun. It is. And we always have fun. I know. And we always have a cat. See the cats in here. Too. <laughs> <laughs> it's, important. it's businessgrowthtime.com forward slash podcast. And you can find all the podcasts there. And then you can also join our group if you have questions or just, you know, we have a really good community back and forth of uh, just learning, asking questions, motivation. And that is businessgrowthtime.xyz. So definitely join that too. Thank you so much, Jared, for teaching us deeper into the VR world. Oh, it's a good time. It's a good time. All right. Thank you for allowing me to do that. And I'll look forward to seeing you all soon.